Kesriya, are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You can start the. Science is a way of life. Science is a perspective. Science is the process that takes us from confusion to understanding in a manner that is precise, predictable, and reliable. A transformation for those lucky enough to experience it that is empowering and emotional. These are the words of the famous spring theory physicist Brian Greene. Hello, good morning, Dimitris, guests, and delegates. It's a pleasure to extend a warm welcome to all present here. Hope you all are good and safe. Thank you for taking your valuable time out and being here with us from all around the world. A general reminder, please follow the instructions during the webinar for the smooth functioning of the program. Be sure to mute your audio so that there is no disturbance during the sessions. If you have any queries, please type those into the Zoom or YouTube live chat box. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. The feedback form of the webinar will be available at the end of the program. Department of Zoology and Biosciences, Unique Christian College, Alua, proudly present to you a webinar on the topic Life Science, Bioscience and Biotechnology, a plethora of opportunities by Dr. Uma Supramani Muni, Program Scientist, RGCB, Crips Bioness, Kochi, as a part of our ongoing Sentinel webinar lecture series. We have a beloved principal, Dr. Rachel Mina Philip, Manager Rachin Rabban Father Thomas John, former Bach scientist and adjunct faculty member, Dr. Susan Eaton, Head of Department of Zoology, Dr. Shirley Thomas, Head of Department of Biosciences, Mr. Shah Mohan, Faculty Coordinator, Department of Zoology, Ms. Rima Joseph, Faculty Coordinator, Department of Biosciences, Dr. Serene Sarah John, and other faculty members of UC College. Without further ado, let's start today's session by seeking blessings from Almighty. I request you all to close your eyes for silent prayer. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Shyam Mohan HOD, Department of Fire Sciences, UC College, for the welcome address. Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, the Department of Biosciences and the Department of Zoology are co-hosting a talk on the careers that are associated with bioscience, biotechnology. And we have our Dr. Uma, who will be our resource person for the day. So uh, this would be an ideal moment for students who are aspiring to go for higher studies, particularly because results are going to be out soon in our university as well. So this is the ideal opportunity where well you'll have the uh, ability to understand the scope of the courses involved in life sciences. And we have with us uh, Dr. Uma in this talk. So let me formally get on to the welcome. Firstly, I would like to welcome the principal of the college, Dr. Rachel Rena Phillip, and the manager of the college, Reverend Thomas John Achin, who have been helping us in conducting various programs over the last few years, in fact. So uh, I would like to welcome them in their absence. Secondly, I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Susan Epen, the teacher, the chief motivator behind the programs that the Department of Biosciences conduct. And uh, welcome, Susan, ma'am, to this program. I would like to welcome Dr. Shirley Thomas, the HOD of the Zoology Department, uh, for orchestrating the event and giving us the right kind of motivation to conduct programs of this sort and at the right juncture. I would, I've been just telling the importance of the seminar at this particular point. So I would like to welcome Dr. Shirley Ma'am to this program. Now I would like to welcome Dr. Uma Subramanian Unni, who is the uh, chief resource person for the day. She is the program scientist in the Crips BioNest. Uh, I myself had my acquaintances with Madam. Uh, welcome, Dr. Uma, and hope the students have a fruitful session today. Uh, welcome to UC College, and uh, uh, nice to have you here. I would like to welcome the coordinators of this program, uh, 
Dr. Seren Sar- Saras John, the teacher of our department, and uh, Dr. Rima Joseph, the teacher of the zoology department. The, both the teachers have been the coordinators for this particular function. And uh, I welcome both the coordinators of the program to this program. The st- main idea behind conducting such programs is the participation of the students. And uh, I wish students who are coordinating this uh, also have the benefit and also the students, particularly from the departments of zoology and from the department of biosciences. I would like to welcome especially the students of departments of zoology and biosciences, as well as all the students who are tuning into the seminar for uh, asp- or aspiring uh, scientific aptitude for their scientific aptitude and for their uh, career progression who are looking forward to biosciences the plethora of opportunities that life sciences will provide them so i welcome all the students and all the other uh, faculty and other members who are, are participating in the seminar from our department from colleges uh, and uh, universities and from the state and outside the state all of you i welcome I welcome one and all thank you sir may i now request dr susan even former bark scientist and our adjunct faculty member to introduce today's chief guest to the webinar good morning it gives me great pleasure to introduce dr uma subramanyam unni who is currently the program scientist at crips bionest kalamsheri cochin which comes under rajiv gandhi center of biotechnology tiruvanthapura uma did her msc in medical biochemistry from university of calicut calicut with a third rank and later she went to bangalore to do her phd in medical biochemistry from the st john's research institute at bangalore her main work for her phd thesis included st- studies on the effect of lysine on protein turnover skeletal mass function insulin sensitivity and stress she has also used stable isotopes like deuterium in her work on human metabolic research from 2005 to 12 she was at uh, bangalore in st john's research institute earlier she had worked as a lecturer in manipal academy of higher education in bangalore from 2003 to 2005 later she was a chief biochemist at st john's research institute bangalore right from 2005 up to 12 i think right then she was uh, also worked uh, she has also worked in a referral lab in a uh, muscat during her uh, st work in uh, bangalore she had a collaboration she worked in a bangalore boston research collaborative uh, on a big project and uh, she was also working as later she was working as an assistant professor at believers church in uh, tiruvalla she also has worked has done hands on data analysis for metabolic profiling imperial international phenome training center imperial college uk so now she is also a member of several societies like a nutrition society of india and also she is a member of medical biochemists india she has expertise in a wide variety of fields like mass spectrometry gcms fid lcms ms lcms ms hplc etc 
she has developed a number of micronutrient assays using GC, MS, and HPLC. She specialized in stable isotope studies for human metabolic research. She is also specialized in quality assurance, quality control, and proficiency testing. She also currently manages the bioincubation facility at the Bionest Kalamashiri. Dr. Uma also helps in a high-end platform for product development, design, planning, and conducting of human metabolic assay, development studies, metabolomics, etc., etc. She has also great experience in statistical analysis and statistical packages. She has nine publications in the international journals to her credit, and she has four symposia presentation and several poster presentation. Today, she will speak on a very important topic, life sciences, biosciences, and biotechnology, a plethora of opportunities. Dr. Uma, please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Hmm. May I now invite Dr. Uma Subramani Muni to deliver today's webinar. First of all, let me thank uh, all the faculty members of uh, UC College, Principal, Sir uh, Susan Ma'am, uh, Dr. Sharon, and Sir Sham Mohan for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present before the students uh, the opportunities that are out there uh, in the field of bioscience. So let me put up the presentation. Just give me uh, a minute so that I can. I hope everybody can see the presentation now. Yeah. So, uh, with all your permission, uh, I will start the webinar. Yeah. So, uh, the topic the topic is life science, bioscience, biotechnology, and the opportunities that are available. So, before going into the opportunities, I would like to I, uh, I assume that all all those who have joined are uh, students in the field of. Uh, biological sciences so to give you a very uh, a glimpse of what is what is the kind of uh, uh, courses that are happening in india so if you look at the ugc the university grants commission there are about 1000 odd colleges and universities um, actually universities in the country and under which there are a number of colleges and there are so many institutes in the proportion of 800 or in above 500 which offer courses like microbiology, biotechnology, biochemistry in addition to the traditional zoology, botany, biology courses that existed earlier. And uh, we have now the biosciences or the biological life sciences uh, recently added into uh, this so this is the kind of uh, colleges that are around the country and this is the number of students that, so you can imagine the number of students that are actually coming out from these colleges so that is not to scare you but it is that this is a need there is a need for uh, students in the field of biological sciences and i think the covid 19 has clearly told us that there is a need of skills or skilled persons in the field of biological sciences now i'll i'll go into explaining how that is so if we look at uh, further down the course structure, uh, as many of you may know that there are diploma as well as graduation, cross-graduation based courses in the country. And the diploma is mainly to do with the technical skill development where you are trained to do the certain skill and 
you can just move into that kind of job at post graduate uh, diploma courses you have a certain uh, level of basic biology understanding and then you engage into a skill development program and then move into that industry or that area now many of you would know but some may be still trying to understand the difference between a btech mtech based biological science and an bsc msc based uh, biological science there's a slight difference between the two which we all need to understand and uh, uh, particularly when we at bioness try to train them we actually understand that there's a lot of gap between the two at times but this gap can be always filled in. the technology oriented the btech and the mtech are more technology oriented and more into understanding applied biology whereas the biology msc or the bg post graduation is more to do with pure biology now one is not less or more than the other the only difference is how you take it forward in your career and that is what exactly i, I i'm going to present here so again uh, continuing with this glimpse of life sciences see what happens is this is a venn diagram which clearly indicates where bioscience today stands because the technologies or the bio related means that are required to meet the end uh, services is what we are looking at in this venn diagram so biotechnology feeds into the medical technology and also feeds into the biosystems technology now and there is a lot of area which overlaps between the two and bioscience is an area which actually can fill in a lot of gaps where uh the knowledge gaps between a pure biotechnology or a pure medical technology student so this is an interdisciplinary area which brings together the development of various uh, products such as the pharmaceutical products the medical devices the agri biotech bio industrial technology so this is uh this is this is a picture which probably uh, one could discuss with the students for more than an hour so i i don't have that much time but i would like most of you to actually look at this picture and try to understand in depth where you would like to fit in 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 this whole venn diagram and how which is your area of interest that will give you uh, you know that is your passion to uh, take it forward now to give you a very simple example to understand the venn diagram if we look at the covid 19 scenario when it started in 2020 what we had is we had rt pcr and molecular biology platforms already there in the biotechnology that had to be taken into the medical technology to a greater extent when the pandemic started then we had another uh, another segment which is a biosystems technology if you look at now the scenarios you will find a lot of biomaterials and biofibers that have been developed actually as protection uh, from covid so so again there's always a, a technology transfer between academic is, institutes and uh, industry and research collaborated research which will help you develop uh various aspects of uh, bi biomedical and bioscience technology so this is this is a diagram which uh, which is from a journal and in that if if you can go and read this journal which is a free source a free resource you should be able to understand this better so when we have this diagram with this diagram there as students i think you will you will end up in such a scenario where we are in a crossroad uh, trying to understand which road to take how to take it forward and the some of the questions like what if i take the wrong path what if i fail and so many questions that come up but i would say that don't go back you you can you can still find the road that you want to take and what is your passion as our great uh, president uh, apj abdul kalam ji said without your involvement you cannot succeed but without with your involvement you cannot fail either so you need to involve you need to
understand you need to uh, expand your knowledge level to actually on uh, move down your career okay so from this let us take a little uh, you know trying to understand how you can do this this uh, this slide i think is quite uh, you know ex self explanatory but still i would like to explain a bit on the certain aspects which are there you need to understand the students that peer pressure of moving into a certain course or a certain area of career always is there parental pressure of taking up a certain stream certain uh, career that's also there then with all this in mind if you go on the internet and try to get information and try to move uh, you know make out a plan from what is available you end up in a scenario where you have too much information available and you don't you get lost you again are at that crossroad uh, kind of scenario and then the biggest problem also is that you're ignorant about your own strengths and weaknesses that is something that you have to understand for yourself evaluate yourself during your course work understand what are your strengths and what weaknesses what are the areas where you feel that you cannot uh, you cannot push yourself but there will be for sure some strengths where you can take it forward then the biggest worry among students is that the worry to fail i think that's something that you should keep it in the corner failure is not the end of the road you need to learn from your failures and you will be able to do it if you come down to the next portion of the slide which is your attributes and your qualities now look outside textbooks is one big advice i would try to give to all students because what happens with this in the student life is you are glued on to a set of books set of textbooks set of uh, you know uh, literature that is available to you or the syllabus or the portion whatever you want to call it you stick to that it is important that you stick to that for your exams but you need to look outside of the textbook and be open to learn if you are not open to learn you will be within that uh, within that short uh, information alone so you will have to look outside the textbook you will have to uh, at pg level for sure you have to start reading uh, publications start reading looking for um, other books which will give you in depth knowledge about certain aspects that you want to develop and that makes you well informed that adds to your confidence and optimistic and you become optimistic that in turn helps you set your goals become proactive and then the next thing is that you have to network now if you if you link all these aspects and attributes and qualities together what you get is that is that very springboard that is there which will help you move ahead in career when your hurdles and difficulties do exist so you have to understand that these difficult difficulties at times cannot be completely wiped out but yes your attributes and qualities will help you take your road ahead okay so with this let me now tell you what is important so what is important is your strength your ability your competency your education your knowledge which is going to take forward so now coming to the opportunities what are there which is what we want to present today i have basically classified the whole uh, opportunity into three broad broad areas and uh, this is what many of us know and these are these are this is what is available outside so this is academic research leading to a phd which may, many of us are very much aware of but we need to understand here what are the personal benefits that one gets from an academic research and a phd one of the main gains from a phd is specialized skills you are specialized to do certain bench work and you're very good at it you know end to end of that work you know how to review literature reading a literature is not enough you need to review it you need to take the take home messages from the papers that are there put it all together and write your own results so that brings in the scientific writing 
then as you go on you you become aware that bioscience doesn't stand alone as an independent factor it is linked to a number of other disciplines and they have to go together for example it can be economics it can be statistics it can be mathematical uh, thinking about the data that you have so these are all interdisciplinary learning that you develop during your academic research then coming to your general skills as you work in an academic in a phd platform you know how to plan work you know how to execute you know to troubleshoot you know how to manage your team and you set up the work culture so at the end of all this you become a professional so that professionalism with specialized knowledge competency honesty integrity and accountability one of the most important aspects of academic research leading to a phd is accountability all this is what you gain during an academic research and phd and it's not a very hard a hard thing yes you may find it difficult but it is at the end of it you would always be happy that you have a phd so what it gives you is a firm foundation to move ahead in career now there may be many people many students who would say that i do not want to i don't want to get into this journey of phd i would prefer doing a job that's also good i'm not saying that's bad that is also good and that job area you have research position so there's a lot of research institutes which are there which i'm going to talk about in my presentation so there are research positions available in these institutes there are industries there are about 5000 plus industry in the area of bioscience which is there in uh, india so those industry positions are available then of course as many of us know the teaching positions in the universities and the colleges so what are, what do these give you on a personal note what do they give you they give you specialized skills again bench work general skill of work planning execution all this you would still gain during a job now coming to the third aspect which many of us have you know kept it in the corner is the entrepreneurship what is entrepreneurship give us on a personal note on a personal benefit it gives you the freedom and which, which is a very big thing to implement introduce research and establish projects and products so ultimately as the saying goes you are the boss so you need you know what you need to do and you have the uh, freedom to do that then you have a satisfaction through your financial gain depending on what product you have introduced how it's doing in the market you have financial satisfaction there is a societal benefit for entrepreneurship because if you've developed something for the society what the society gives back to you is a great satisfaction and as an entrepreneur you develop managerial skills you understand business skills you develop those skills you get trained to do that you know how to form a team you know how to keep the team together and these develop and improvise during your entrepreneurship journey so that is a very very big area that many of us actually do not explore and i think it is high time we explore that area because that area is not again independent of research or the jobs they all are linked together i'll come to that and there may be another uh, small segment of people who do research as well as a job which is in which in many cases would be a research job and a, a phd or a teaching position and a phd so that's one area as well now coming to a very sensitive area which is ultimately we are all human beings we are all society we all have to give back to the society and what does each of these area give back to the society that's a very very interesting uh, thing that an academic research leading to a phd if not taken forward further down the career path does not give back much to the society and that's something we need to uh, realize and it's difficult to realize it quite early in life but of course as you as you work or as you go on with your research you need to realize that you have to go back and give it back to the society and the significance of that research conducted 
probably if it's available in the public domain is available to the public would yes you would be able to give it back to the society but otherwise if you just do your phd and uh, then don't take it further that is that is i would say is not good because you're not giving it back to the society on the other hand a job if you continue on a job yes you still still support a, a skilled workforce you support research you impart knowledge so you're still giving back something to the society your experience what you have developed over time is being given back to the society but in the case of entrepreneurship there is a big benefit to the society the benefit of the product to mankind which is something that we many of us don't realize because we have developed a product for the mankind and people are going to buy it and we are serving the uh, society create skilled workforce we are creating a lot of skilled workforce uh, who can actually work in different industries uh, in different places as well as for the company create employment of jobs you would have heard of many stories of certain villages which have actually become uh, you know has prospered because there was an industry which was located uh, located or uh, which an industry which came up very close to that women who got jobs women who become edu- became educated because there was an entrepreneur setting up a certain uh, certain industry they are based on the resources available you have you would have heard of many such stories and this is what an entrepreneurship uh, is all about so you support various aspects of the society you support scientists and researchers because as i said these are not independent of each other you will need an entrepreneur would need the advice of scientists and researchers to actually build so many things in in, in that product whatever that product is you build an ecosystem you build communities you build uh, uh, researchers you bring in people you bring in technology so you support the knowledge and you also support technology transfer so an entrepreneur actually gives back a lot to the society and which is very important so this is basically what happens so once you've done an academic research you need to take further down transfer the skills train come back to the mainstream jobs or go back into becoming an entrepreneur these so when you look at this diagram you can actually understand that an academic research leading to phd has things going out of it so that's that means that a lot needs to be given from that because you are now a skilled person okay so that is that is an important message i want to give to all of you students is that when you do your phd phd should not be for just your personal gains you have to take it give it back to the next uh, next generation next people uh, next set of uh, people who are coming up now coming to the hardcore what are the uh, institutes in the country and where you can find these information is something that many of you may be interested to know so these are the government institutes so the i'm looking at the indian scenario only and i am here i have not presented the private in the private institutes there are a number of private institutes which are some of the top institutes of the country i have not brought in those because that numbers there are a lot of them you can always go back and search but these are the institutes under various departments of the country which you need to go and find out what are the kind of courses they offer for biosciences this is only the biosciences i'm not talking about any other field it's only biosciences so if you look at all the institute of medical sciences aims initially used to be only one but now there are seven uh, all the institute of medical sciences across the country under the department of biotechnology or dbt there are 15 and th- institutes across the country which are research institutes which offer postgraduate uh, education as well as phd and research council for scientific and industrial research or csir has 16 institutes the dst has 11 and the icar or the indian council of agricultural research is a very big uh, set of institutes under uh, universities under under it there are four deemed universities 65 institutes 
because agriculture is a very important area that needs to be um, addressed so there are 14 national research centers and there are small project directorates based on the type of crop that is grown in different parts of the country and uh, the indian institute of technology so if many of you do not know the iits do have biological sciences they have biotechnology in some of their institutes there are 16 of them and then is the indian council for medical research or the icmr which has 23 institutes so this is the proportion of research institutes in the country in addition to this there are the private institutes as you as you all know the vit the srm college the um, amrita vidyapeet uh, st john's medical college these are some of the private institutes which have a wide variety of research areas and there's very niche research happening in most of these institutes so these are also places where you can go and do your phd so on the right side you can see some of the top uh, universities or uh, top institutes uh, conducting biological research in the country so uh, on the slide you can also see a link i i would suggest that all of you go back on this uh, link that the india bioscience which actually gives you a lot of information about how you can take your career forward where you can find which institute has what courses and a lot of information there so you should all go and visit this site which will give you a lot of information about uh, how you want to take your career forward and it is it is all compiled together in a book which i'll be discussing uh, uh, later so coming coming back from that so what happens is during your journey in your career you need to get trained so there are again there are places where you have various skill development programs training programs these are academic training programs what i'm talking about here the csir summer research training which happens uh, at various time points and these these training programs are good for the students at their degree or pg level because what it gives you is a network it gives you information outside the books which i mentioned earlier and it also gives you a lot of uh areas that you wouldn't have even thought about so it gives you uh, a lot of uh, skills plus it gives you some networking to actually move on in your career so there are a number of such training programs some of them are paid some of them are scholarship based so there are qc quality control programs so if you are planning to go into an industry and you want to have uh, you know to add some credits into your cv these trainings would help you but what again i suggest is the students end up going for too many such trainings which is which is not going to help you need to have a clear set of goals and then go for these trainings that is what i would suggest so this is a very interesting one the research inter internship for biologists which is conducted by the government of india along with harvard so it is a uh, and ibab so you have to uh, i think this uh, workshop is over for this year maybe for the next year you can uh, try i register it's a fourth five days program and i'm sure you will have a lot of people there with whom you can network and move and decide what what you want to do whether you want to move into the industry or whether you want to do with the phd or you want to do continue with the job so ultimately coming back to this picture so when you go for these trainings this is what you get you start looking out of your textbooks you are told you given some resources where you have to read you need to open to learning and you become well informed that adds to your confidence and optimism coming okay let's continue the academic program coming back to this phd so i want to give you a very a glimpse of what are the exams that you would have to clear to do your phd many of you may know which is the ugc net the csir ugc the ncbs exam 
but what is also there is there are some of the research institutes of the country which actually conduct their own separate exams many of them keep a criteria or a cut off for their uh, exams and an additional you need to have your ugc net exam also but that is different between different institutes and in universities also conduct their own exams for the phd program what ultimately these uh, exams are for to assess you whether you can actually go on to become you know do a research but uh, i feel this is more of uh, a selection or an elimination criteria if you really want to do a phd it's what matters is why do a phd if you have an answer if you have a clear cut answer for why i want to do a phd i think these exams shouldn't be a problem you should be able to take up these exams or even without these exams there are institutes where you will be able to register for phd and take your research for, forward so these exams are not a block there for you to study but these exams are a selection criteria if you clear them you have your own set of advantages but if you do not then you have other options as well but all of you sit down understand why you want to do this phd have a clarity before you start now coming to the most uh, you know the easiest part of it that is the jobs so this is what many of us want because we all want financial security and i didn't uh, bring in the financial part when i spoke about the different careers because there are gaps there are differences between uh, different areas however you need to you need to read a little more on those aspects or try to understand that and then decide whether you want to do a phd you want to move on a job or you want to become an entrepreneur so that's an that's a very big area that we need to uh, you know discuss so i'll not bring that in for the time being now coming to the jobs uh, earlier when i mentioned i spoke about the ugc having so many colleges now these also offer you jobs they are not the uh, they are not the institutes which is which are bringing about out the students but they are also giving you jobs so those are your points where you can take up a job it could be a teaching job or it could be a research job and again these research institutes also have what is known as a technical assistant technical officer technician kind of positions or a junior research fellow research assistant positions which you can take up right after your masters so i'm talking about if you do not do your phd but want to move on to job still these are places that you can go to and remember the venn diagram so you're all needed there for so many uh, means to be you know take so many biotechnology or bioscience based technologies to be developed now coming to the indian biotech industry there are as of now according to the brac according to the government of india there are 5000 companies in the field of biotechnology which are 760 are core companies and 4000 odd startups and if you categorize them they are mainly in this five areas that's biopharma bioagriculture bioindustrial and then there is a combination between different segments so bio again it is a very big area that has to be linked now to the bio bio industry so bio it then the corporate research organizations and operations that many of these industries do and then they have their own r&d divisions and other research services so these are the places where you can find job now how to find them i think as of now in india internet is quite cheap you can go find out you can write to them and what you need to uh, have is an attitude you can write to them ask them you can go to their website chat with them see what are the options there and apply and there are so many sites uh, like biotechnica where you can actually register yourself and you start getting emails of uh, when a job is posted so these are the ways and i would say that you should start this in at your postgraduate level itself don't wait till your exams to get over the first year itself you can start these 
areas. Now, coming to the entrepreneurship and what is the Indian scenario. Uh, now, this is a slide where I have just put a few news uh, reports and uh, discussions that have happened in some seminars. So basically, biotechnology is the third largest. India is the third largest biotech destination in Asia Pacific. And you need to understand that that, that's what I was trying to tell you. You are all needed there, and you all need to, uh, you know, deliver what you have learned into the society. So, as uh, Madhavi Rao, who is a senior program manager of Virag, mentioned, the collaboration with infrastructure-rich universities, those universities which have quite a rich. Uh, infrastructure, that's technology platforms, should open their doors to the industry to grow. So what has been happening earlier is industries and universities used to be uh, separate entities. There was no discussions, there were no talks. Very rarely that would happen. But that should not be the scenario. That is what she is trying. So Birak, which is an which is an important segment of BBT, which is Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, has started a lot of programs for academia industry collaborated research. So the academia tries to develop a research. It needs to be translated, it needs to be converted back into a product and brought into the market. Industry is very good at doing that. So these collaborations help bringing a lot of products into the market. Otherwise, what earlier used to happen is the academic research used to become stagnant. It never used to get translated. So this uh, this gap is being filled by the RAC. Then CCAMP, uh, CEO also mentioned the partnering of cooperations with universities where the infrastructure they provide can be set up, can help incubators. Now, what does this mean? Is universities are there, there are industries, and when they link together, there are new small startups that can spin off from there or use both these facilities and develop their products. So that is for the new uh, ventures that have been uh, introduced or so new startup companies that are formed. Now the industry as well as the university can help them develop their product. But however, we need to understand that as a new company, you can't just uh, you know rent out a space and start working there. You need a lot of technology platforms that are required. You need um, simple to say if you want to set up a molecular biology based lab to develop your product. You need a you need a lot of investment. You in the in the proportion of fifty lakhs or plus to actually set up that lab which is going to be really difficult. And that's what we also do at Bionis. We provide these facilities to the small startups so that they can do their proof of concept. They can do their product testing at this place and bring their product into the market. And then they can either technology transfer it to the industries or they can uh, expand their own company and bring out the product in the market. So there are nine such biotechnology parks across the country and there are biotechnology science clusters. These are different institute clusters which are present and then more than 60 bio incubators. So basically these incubators help, you help the startup link with the research institutes as well as with the industry and that's a very important aspect of society as i was mentioning so this bio incubators need researchers they need industry-based researchers they need pure science researchers all coming together into an ecosystem supporting the startup companies and that's that is what is required and i think covid has actually told us that this is very very important because the research that was being developed have now been translated into products and quickly we could translate it into vaccines and things like that. So, so life says students too can benefit if educational bo bodies could offer courses developed according to the need of the industry. So that is that is some of the educational bodies can do. What I mentioned earlier is a postgraduate training or a, or a skill development program which can help the students. 
So there are a lot of innovations. There are a lot of partnership and collaboration with the, between academia and industry that is happening. And that is a very that is an area that you can all of you can explore. So coming to that uh, aspect, you again. When it comes to entrepreneurship, also you need to get trained. So the Ministry of Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises have come out with a number of entrepreneurship development programs. So these are, as I mentioned here in the previous slide, this is basically to train the entrepreneur to uh, in in accordance with the industry needs, so that they can develop their product. So you have certificate courses uh, in industrial biotechnology. There are certificate courses for plant tissue culture, microbial quality control, fermentation. Uh, we here at Bionis also do some some amount of training for uh, entrepreneurs to understand some of the technologies and uh, develop their products. So these are the training opportunities that are available. And then uh, intellectual property, which is a very important area that uh, as an entrepreneur, you need to understand. And an academician also needs to understand Then there should be a clear agreement between the two as well as intellectual property is concerned. So this is, this is basically what I wanted to bring to all of you, the three main areas that as uh, after post-graduation, which you can you know, kind of move into. And uh, it is not necessary that uh, you will have to stick on to one area and stay there. You can move between these fields. You can decide at various points of your career what is a path that you want to change or you want to take. Okay, this is a very interesting uh, and inspiring story. I thought uh, maybe I'll share it with you. It's a publication, basically, of... Uh, of Mr. Jeffrey Smith, who is the managing director of Mars Ventures. Now, if you look at the above box I've just highlighted, he is a doctorate in law. But what what has he moved on into? He is now training academy and industry about advanced bioscience, training the scientists and the stakeholders for discovery of new therapeutics to treat human disease. Now, from a doctorate in law, he had gained all those trainings and uh, information about this field. And he used to be uh, an editor for disease models and mechanisms. And then now he is in a position where he can discuss how to bring academy and industry together, how to bring the scientists together. So he's moved, it, uh, it is a very, very uh, different journey that he has taken. So similarly, uh, what I want to, why I wanted to bring this was, all of you need not, need not consider the path of a career as a straight road. You can, you can take cut roads, but no shortcuts, but you will have to put your, put your information together and take it forward. Now, these are some of the important links. As I, was, as I mentioned earlier also, if you look at this topic of opportunities for bioscience, it's a very vast area to cover. And, and by just telling you this is there or this is not there is not going to help because all, all of you who have registered this webinar are the person there are all in the different stages of your career. All have different priorities. All have different passions. So what path to choose can be decided only by you. But what I can give you is certain information and where to look for those informations. So these are some of those links uh, which, uh, which you can go and probably you can uh, take this uh, slide and go to these sites there. India Bioscience, a very important site that you all need to go and uh, read certain open resource material that is there, available over there, one of which is this Disha. As the word itself means, the meaning of Disha is the direction. So it gives you a clear direction of how to take uh, your career forward as life science and biotechnology students. Biotechnica, many of you may know, 
it is it is a it is a private site where you can register and you get uh, information as to the training workshops jobs phd's all those informations are there byrac is a site where if you want to become an entrepreneur you should go and look at this site and understand how you can ask for funding what are the different types of funding available what are the kind of uh, uh industry linkages that you can develop what is an incubator is an which incubator would be the right place for you to develop your product and things like that the D- G- uh, dbt jrf site is where for your phd you can look for fundings for us researchers scholarships and other things dst again dst has various research programs which you can go and uh, try and explore the other one is a northeastern uh, education site which which is a, again it's a blog basically it gives you uh, it basically gives you what is the difference between academy and industry and what what is that you need to understand and how based on your priorities you can actually choose and as i was reading through this paper i realized that one of the important points that they mentioned was you need to be flexible so you don't you don't end up you say okay this is all i'm going to do i'm not going to be you know i'm not going to change no you have to be flexible take your career forward in in a way that you know that gives you career go- growth and all the time you're open to understanding and learning that is very very important and uh, learning never ends with uh, in in such scenarios then you have the icmr and the ic icar sites where again you can get a lot of information and uh, there was an interesting uh, paper on the plos which is choosing between academia industry and they have sort of brought the whole thing down into 10 important points and how to assess uh, or decide between these two so this is what i mentioned this is an homework for all of you to go back sit down and look at these sites and write down plan your own journey so um i i could have picked up this one paper and discussed for half an hour and I, and i feel that that will not help because you will have to go and read and understand these papers publications and then choose what to do because every one of you are different and will have different uh, areas to uh, work with. your interest may be different so with that i think i have uh, covered uh, most of it i think we will keep it open uh, for discussion so that we can discuss and uh, see what are your uh, how we i can help you uh, you know with, with these opportunities thank you thanks uh, to uc college for giving me this opportunity and thanks for patient hearing we'll open the dais for questions Thank you so much for the wonderful presentation, ma'am. We will now go ahead and take some time for questions. Just a reminder: please be sure to type your questions into the live chat box. We already have few questions. Uh, there's a question from Iren. Uh, what are the most imp- interesting biotech researches that are running right now? Okay, I, uh, if you ask that question regarding the from the funding perspective at present, with the COVID scenario, most of the DBT DST sites or most of the funding opportunities are in the field of COVID. But otherwise, uh, these pr- these things keep changing. So you will have to see what are the proposals that's been called for. The next thing is, so there are there is an area where proposals are called for certain areas for which proposals are called, and many apply to those calls. That's one area. The other thing is there are open uh, uh, platforms where 
you can submit any area of interest that is important that you feel is going to make a significant uh, a biological question being addressed so that is open mostly at different times of the year but if i understand right at present most of this are in a very very low funded uh, uh, state because of the covid so now most of the funding is going on with the, in the area of covid it can be uh, addressing the vaccine problem addressing evaluation of uh, what is the effect of the vaccine and so many other things various uh, Uh, product developments are being asked for for uh, addressing the covid-19 so these are the areas at present that are available okay we have another question uh it's from disha hello ma'am tif for contact integrated msc phd if someone is an msc in tif then how they select people for phd there itself uh, that i i uh, may not be able to completely answer that question but still from what i understand is for an integrated phd uh during uh, the integrated phds are generally in institutes where there's a very strong research wing in uh, in the area of bioscience so there will be professors who will have uh, phd positions available and uh, the last year or the last semester of your masters is discussions with these professors on to how to register for the phd but at the same time i am sure these universities will have an elimination segment where your msc's uh, have to be you know after the msc there is an evaluation but in the integrated uh, course uh, i think they just uh, take all of them into the integrated phd so the number of integrated uh, phd seats may be less that's what i understand i i i am not very sure about the situation you will have to go into these sites and check before you embark into the msc itself so if you are very clear at uh, after your graduation that you want to do a phd and you want to go on to the msc phd integrated program you'll have to look for those institutes which give you uh, these kind of programs and uh, if my understanding goes in the bioscience field the numbers are very very few with uh, msc integrated to a phd Ma'am, we have another question yeah. from Jodi Lakshmi, MG. What should I know about biotech before making it my career? Okay, it's a very uh, open kind of question. What you need to know? Okay, uh, before that, uh, let me ask you a question. If you're here still, uh, what is your uh, graduation? Are you doing bioscience, or have you completed your graduation? Uh, are you there? Whoever asked that question. If not, uh, let me. If you're, if you're a bioscience graduate, you need to. You need to again. When biotechnology, you need to decide between whether you want to do a M Tech biotechnology or you want to do uh, or you want to do a B Tech biotechnology. As I mentioned earlier, uh, if you're already a degree graduate in bioscience, I think you cannot go on to an. Uh, on to doing m tech you will have to do with msc biotechnology and uh, what is the research or what is the interest you have uh, that that will determine whether you want to go into biotechnology because biotechnology again is becoming a vast area because there's molecular biology there is genetic engineering there is microbiology there is biofertilizer agri biotech based uh, uh, areas that can be explored so you will also need to know what specialization you want to take in biotechnology uh before you you know take up biotechnology as a as a career okay ma'am 
Jagalakshmi also wants to know the difference between BTEC biotechnology and BSC biotechnology. Yeah, that I think I mentioned uh, in the in the presentation that BTEC actually trains you with a lot of technology based uh, understanding and uh, application of the biology. Okay. So biology application is what BTEC helps you. But at the same time, you need to know that basic biology needs to be well understood in biotech as well. Whereas in the case of BSc, bio, uh, BSc biotechnology, you are taught the biology or the BSc courses, the MSc courses, a lot of emphasis is given for understanding the biology. It is to a greater extent not an application-oriented course. So what happens is after uh, after BSc, after your BSc, you need to uh, you know expand your technology understanding through training programs. Whereas in the case of BTech or MTech, you do a lot of uh, technology-based work during your uh, during your course itself. But I would I would never say uh, BTEC or MTEC is better than the BSc or MSc. They are they they feed into different uh, requirements. But at some time point, these two can come together, and uh, the knowledge expansion can be done. So if a BSc, MSc after biotechnology can expand their technology understanding, it's possible. Uh, and at the same time, we check and MPEC can expand their biology understanding also. So uh, you need to, you really need to uh, understand that these are both, one is an application based and one is a pure uh, uh, biology based. That's in simple terms, that is how it is. And uh, if uh, I'm not sure whether I put that link, there is also um, this information about this from many universities about how how they are uh, you know, different in terms of their course uh, structure, the time that is spent with each subjects and the number of subjects, all these informations are there available in certain university sites which offer both. So I think you can go and uh, search. There are uh, the few things I got was um, the band value for BTEC is much more because the employment, it's more of an employment based uh, area, BTEC, whereas your biology based is more into theoretical understanding, teaching uh, and research. Hope I uh, address that question. Okay, ma'am, we have got another question from Disha. Yeah. People say research is not a stable career. I don't think so. But I would really like to know about the job security in research work and how is the research life in real? Okay. Uh, again, very interesting question. Uh, research is not a stable... What was that? It is not a stable... Carrier. A stable carrier. I, I really dis I disagree with that uh, thing that, uh, you know, um, research is not stable. Uh, if you have a research interest, then you can yourself bring in the stability. That means uh, when you do a PhD, you don't just end with a PhD. You start writing proposals, you start submitting uh, for research grants, and you start bringing in funds that's when the research institutes would help you stay there. So research is an ever-evolving, um, what to say, it's, uh, you know, it, you have to keep continuously doing it. It's not a monotonous job. Research is not a monotonous job. So if, you, if you're more interested in a monotonous job, wherein, you know, day in and day out you do the same thing, then research is not your option. On the other hand, if you're always asking questions about biology, you want to answer those questions, you want to see how to expand your knowledge level. Yes, research will become a stable, uh, you know, stable uh, career if you're all the time willing to do that. That's what I said. If you're open to learning, open to research, 
it's it it can it it will become a stable income but if you want just a career which will give you financial security life stability maybe at some time point you may feel that research is not but that depends on how your outlook about research okay ma'am uh, we have another question from jewel anna good morning ma'am is there any chance of taking veterinary or forensic after the zoology degree i think there's a lot of scope for um, forensic uh, uh that's not an area that i have specialized in so i will not have much information but forensic is an uh, is an important area that's growing in india as of now because um, forensic science was uh, you know very minimal in uh, certain aspects of uh, uh, crime and other things in india but slowly that's evolving and with uh, with the uh, platforms that are available the molecular biology and uh, biotechnology platforms that are as of now available and that is more uh, you know that is expanding so i think that's a very good area to uh, get into veterinary science uh, i'm i'm not the right person to answer that question whether uh, you know from zoology uh, moving to veterinary sciences would be better i'm really sorry that is not an area of my specialization and uh, i don't think i'll be able to answer i think you should talk to some uh, you know uh, veterinary institutes and how the situation in india is and how the what are the uh, what are the scope for expanding it because if you ask me outside india there are a lot of institutes which uh, focus on research in the area of animal husbandry but the kind of research in animal husbandry is not that great in india this is looking at animal husbandry as a research so veterinary sciences would be an area that uh, you know that would be uh, uh, will create jobs or veterinary science lab jobs in that areas or research in that area which is not so great in india so but yes animal husbandry is a very very promising area Uh, to work on okay ma'am we have another question from disha if someone wishes to do a phd from abroad especially countries like germany will he or she be accepted for research platforms or job in india yes why not uh, i mean if you're doing a phd abroad uh, uh, you can always come back see uh, when what happens with phd abroad is many people from india particularly complete a phd abroad they do a post doc uh, abroad and there are uh, schemes uh, particularly of dbt and dst where you can apply for those schemes and come back that's known as a uh, return fellowships so where you can come back to the research institutes in india and work for like a little higher than a uh, post doctoral level and then uh, expand your research set up your own lab in a research institute that that platform exists so it is not that phd abroad are not welcome back here uh, okay we have another question from ann paul saju Ma'am, can you suggest some career opportunities after completing PG Medical Lab Technology? Medical Lab Technology uh, is is an area which which is strongly required in the hospital settings. If you really want to expand your career in that area, first and foremost, you need to have a specialization. You need to have one specialization in that area when you say. medical lab technology you can be a pathology specialization or you can go into histopathology cyto uh, cyto uh, chemistry and those kind of uh, specializations or you can go with microbiology biochemistry specializations and uh, if you're looking for jobs outside india you should have some uh, certificate exams or certificate exams uh, uh, passed from 
uh, the American College of Pathologists. So that will actually help you, uh, you know, get into very important, uh, very large uh, hospitals abroad as well as in India. In many many uh, hospitals, uh, multi. Um, I mean. Uh, hospitals which are across the globe, which are operating both in India and abroad, are also looking for people who have these kind of certifications. Also, medical lab technology is not an area where you cannot do PhD. You can do PhD in uh, in that area, and uh, even uh, has a lot of scope with entrepreneurship also because you actually know what are the technology platforms that are used in a hospital lab. And you, how you can bring out, you know, how you can decrease the time, uh, how you can improve, uh, how you can simplify some technologies and bring it to the platform. There's a lot of a lot of scope for these kind of uh, courses. But again, explore further into uh, what are the just 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 by working in a hospital lab will not help you have to expand beyond that and specialize um we have another question from jona hi ma'am also have completed post graduation in zoology and if there is lack of practical skills especially in this pandemic Will there be any impact as I wish to do PhD? Yeah, that is a that is a big problem now in this set of uh, students who have passed out in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one because uh, the practicals have not been conducted properly. The project post or project work was not. Uh, I mean, students have not been able to do that. So, what I would uh, suggest to that students is. To enroll into training programs which are available in most of the research institutes in Kerala itself, there are so many research institutes which offer short trainings. That is three months, six months training. Uh, it could be a paid training, but still it's worth going there and doing the training, getting a, a lab experience. So if your zoology I think you should go into institutes uh, which are offering uh, those kind of uh, courses or those kind of research which uh, which is being conducted. You go there and start working in their lab and uh, uh, get uh, get this three month or six month advanced training done. And that will help you understand the hardcore uh, laboratory based work. And it will help you even even those who have actually completed their course and uh, have had their lab uh, uh, work in their colleges still will benefit from these kind of training because what happens in a college is a very basic uh, laboratory work. So you when it comes to research institutes, you have the high end uh, work that is happening for the type of questions that are being addressed in that biological questions that are being addressed in that institute so you will benefit from such training so you should go for such trainings and summer school programs uh, as you as you wait for your results i think you should be able to do that and now slowly things are opening up in most places uh, though it was all closed down uh, even in our institute we had shut down uh, training programs we have slowly opened it so you should be able to uh, go for these kind of trainings and expand your skill sets. Okay, ma'am. We have a question from Aishwarya. What area should be focused enrolled in UPSC Biology Scientific Officer? UPSC? Biology Scientific Officer. Scientific Officer. Very sorry, I yeah. I've never tried to uh, look into those areas, so uh, that's the question. I won't be able to help you. Uh, very sorry about that. Okay, ma'am. Uh, we have a question. Um, we have a question from Krishnendu here. 
Ma'am, can you say about job opportunities after B.Sc. Zoology? Yeah. Uh, at the, at, after degree, if you want to go for jobs, uh, you should uh, you should go for technical or technical assistant or technician jobs. And uh, well, what I have seen from most of the job sites and uh, some of the opportunities that are there is uh, the graduate level positions are very less. So uh, if you if you are very clear that you don't want to go for your postgraduate, you can look for these kind of jobs, which are the technicians or technology technical assistant kind of jobs. In uh, and even uh, in case of zoology, many of the research institute have animal labs, and these uh, animal labs would need people in that field. So you could apply for these positions, uh, and but still explore the possibility of doing a PG uh, post graduation in zoology or in biotechnology and expand your skill sets. But if you are not able to do so look for technician, technical uh, positions in research institutes which have animal-based uh, um, animal uh, work. Also, you can look for, uh, again, as I said, animal husbandry and uh, farming kind of uh, places where uh, zoology students may be required at degree level for technical uh, assistant positions. And we have a question from Nandini Mish. What is the scope of molecular biology and genetics in India? Molecular biology and uh, genetics is expanding. Uh, if you look at the IG, uh, IGIP site, uh, the DBT site, uh, you have a lot of um, uh, molecular biology based courses that are being offered as well as molecular biology in different areas, that is in disease biology, plant biotechnology, and uh, in uh, diagnostic uh, kit development. These, these are some of the fields where molecular biology is required. And as, a, as people specialized in that knowledge can go into uh, these kind of post-graduation uh, courses, uh, and and that is that is expanding. I mean, uh, it's a good area to actually focus. But uh, again, I would caution you: uh, don't focus at the time of your degree. I would say that I'd go for a more of an open course, like a bioscience course, in at your graduation level, and then specialize at your PG level. Don't uh, right away specialize at graduation level because uh, otherwise you'll be stuck. So better to have an open and then specialize for molecular biology or genetics at a postgraduate level. Okay, Alfie Chaka uh, likes to ask whether clinical research field is good option after MSc biotechnology. Yeah, clinical research is, uh, is a good area because uh, uh, clinical, uh, you know, now it is the clinical research that is happening most, particularly during the camp, uh, uh, pandemic, it's the clinical research that is happen happening maximum. So clinical research is a very good area to, you know, after all, disease biology is, is a very, very important area that most research institutes pursue and I have a strong, uh, you know, strong uh, understanding. So clinical research is very good. If you're talking about clinical research uh, from the pharmaceutical, pharma, pharmaceutical company point of view or from a research institute point of view or from a hospital point of view, in each areas you will be able to fit in. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Krishnendu T.S. wants to ask, ma'am, can you say about job opportunities after... Uh, ah, sorry, ma'am. Uh, it's a question from Fatima Ashraf. Ma'am, can you say about the career opportunities immediately after integrated MSc Biology? Integrated Biology? Yeah, ma'am. 
that is after MSCs. Yeah. So after MSC, yes, what I would suggest is uh, if you if you are still not made up your mind about your PhD, um, you can uh, choose between an industry based industries at present industries. Uh, particularly, pharmaceutical industry wants a lot of uh, MSc uh, level uh, people for various activities for various drug development. The industry is always on the hunt for people at MSc level, at post graduation level, and uh, you will find these opportunities quite a lot on the site. At the same time, the research institutes want research assistants. Uh, research assistants who are before their PhD to do their lab related work and that is an area if you if if you get into that uh, that area you will have a better opportunity to interact with the uh, with the number of researchers to actually decide whether you want to move on to PhD or not that's one advantage over there on the other hand if you're with, in the industry also you will uh, get to know a lot of people who have been in the industry for years together at MSc level, but have gained a lot of knowledge uh, in the industry. So these are really resourced uh, uh, people with whom you can network and uh, decide again whether you want to come back to academia or you want to decide to continue in industry. So these uh, these kind of job opportunities. So initially, when you start off, you take up a job, and then uh, you could actually uh, decide where you want to, which path you want to take. That is that's also um, you know that's an area that you can look for. And of course, teaching is always open to postgraduate students or for postgraduates. Uh, that of course, and I would say that teaching should happen always parallel to all these jobs if possible so that you're always uh, learning teaching is not just teaching alone you're always learning as well during your teaching okay ma'am uh, neha lucia wants to know ma'am which field would you prefer between biotechnology and biochemistry in terms of job opportunities in the research field okay it's so, a um, very tricky question you are asking because I'm a biochemist at present working in a bio incubation center. So, uh, biochemistry is an area which uh, calls for a lot of um, very specific learning. It is biochemistry. If you look at biochemistry in a larger perspective, there's a lot of metabolic pathways, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, cycles and all those things that you have to learn where biotechnology although gives you some overview of these you do not have to you may not have to understand chemistry to a greater extent so if you are more of a chemistry oriented person you can understand chemistry better i would suggest go for biochemistry but if you feel that by uh, chemistry is not something that you can really uh, you know, understand and expand your knowledge, then I think that's all I can think of between biochemistry and biotechnology. Otherwise, uh, these two are kind of parallelly uh, going subjects. Ma'am, Disha Bishwas wants to know, uh, Ma'am, I am in my second year of BSc Microbiology. I am already in a specialized stream in my bachelor's. Would that decrease my opportunities at any point of time? No, that doesn't decrease your opportunity. But at the same time, you need to, if you are a BSc microbiology, you need to expand your knowledge beyond by microbiology and uh, you know understand other interlinked disciplines better at degree as well as when you do your PG. That is all that is required. So if you are already specialized, you need to expand it further so that you know the links. You are not, uh, you, you are a microbiologist, so I do not understand certain areas. That should not be the case. So if you are a microbiologist, expand it further. As you study, you, uh, you just don't stick on to your, um, you know, microbiology syllabus alone. 
you expand it a little further and understand the interlinked um, subjects. Uh, okay, ma'am. Shita really wants to know. Now, thank you, ma'am. It was really an informative session. Can you please suggest some points to focus on to improve our resume? Yeah, improving uh, resume, improving your LinkedIn profile. These are very important for your networking, and that's the reason. In my last slide, uh, I spoke about uh, the book. That or, or the, it's a small book from uh, biosciences by Suman Govel. That is the Disha. In my last uh, slide, I mentioned about Disha. I would suggest that you go and read that whole. It's a, it's about uh, 60, 70 pages of a document, which gives you different segments, such as um, just uh, from the index tell you. That it will give you information of how to write your resume, how to create and maintain your LinkedIn profile, how to write a cover letter. If you're writing to a research institute or if you're writing to an industry, you just don't write it half a sadly. You have to write it in a very, uh, very neat manner because uh, people uh, try to understand your caliber through these documents. So, how to write a you know, cover letter. These and how to be, uh, how to you know, present yourself in an interview. These, these are some of the detailed description in this book. So what I suggest is uh, the the reason I did not go into all that is that's going to take up a lot of time. So I wanted to show you where you can find all this. I think Disha is an important book that all bioscience students uh, are in the field of microbiology, biochemistry, bioscience. All of them should go and. Uh, read and at the end of the book there is interviews with various uh, great personalities in the field of bioscience like the DBT secretary now Dr. Renu Sarup and uh, Dr. Vijay Raghav and a number of uh, Sudhan Aran Rao so many of them their interviews are there so when you actually uh, read all that you understand that how important the whole subject is and how you can take your uh, career forward please go and it's a it's a free resource you can freely download it and uh, read it okay ma'am we have a question from hari priya ma'am is it necessary to do pg in zoology or any equivalent courses after completing our ug in zoology to get into a teaching career if you if you're focused only on a teaching career i think uh, you should then uh, stick on to that i mean to specialize into zoology but if you want to expand uh, you know you want to uh, expand beyond uh, just teaching zoology then i think you need to look at courses like uh, biotechnology or uh, you know uh, by Bio, bioscience uh, at a at a pg level i don't think that would be of use because you are already a zoology person so if you are uh, already bsc zoology i think you should uh, if you are focusing on teaching go for more post graduation in uh, zoology itself it looks like we have covered all our questions is there anything else you would like to mention, ma'am? I think uh, from uh, many of the questions that I understand is that uh, you, or as students, all of them need to network with people in specific areas and uh, get a lot of insight into uh, insight into what are the courses available in various uh, various uh, streams and link up with them and and combine it or put it together along with what is your passion i mean what is that that you want to do further down your career and that answer would take you to the path like uh, some some people um, are very clear that they want to take up a teaching career and they want to stick on to that career 
but at times uh, that may not be the case you may end up in a research job you may end up in a research position so you know how you take it from there it's not that you have hard you have hit a wall you can move out you can uh, you know explore further and move out it's there is no hard and fast rule that you have to stick on to one area alone you can you can move between these but at the same time there are a lot of priorities that you need to balance that balancing act is something that many of you actually need to do with your life priorities with your career priorities bringing all of them together and deciding what you really want to do there is nothing like this is right this is wrong what is good for you with what you as a individual want uh, passion is some may be very clear that research is not my passion i cannot put together that much time because i have certain other obligations it's fine and fair but at the same time if you are if you are a clear researcher you should be prepared to spend so many hours of your day into doing that work so there are certain certain other uh, the your social life your uh, family life all these needs to be put together when you take these decisions that's why i said there are certain publications that are out there on uh, trying to help you balance between these and trying to understand all of you please read this uh, that's why i put those links there go and read them and try to understand and make a clear a uh, uh, clear picture of what you want to do because as teachers as professors as lecturers they can all of us actually can tell you a number of things but what's good for you as adult as post as post graduate people you know better than anybody else and that's a confidence that you need to build that yes i know what i what is good for me is will come only from getting information being informed once again thank you ma'am we are so glad to have you today Uh, now may i invite ms raymond joseph assistant professor department of zoology uc college to propose a vote of thanks thank you sriya so we have come to an end of our webinar today it's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks to all those who have been directly and indirectly associated with this webinar First and foremost, I would like to express uh, the vote of thanks to our resource person, Dr. Uma Subramanian Umi, Program Scientist, RGCB, Krits Bionist. Today, she has given us an excellent talk on the opportunities in the field of life science, bioscience, and biotechnology. She has given us an insight into the diverse areas in which a student in life science can do uh, different courses, especially. post graduation and research and more importantly how to go about in choosing a career path a career path that will benefit both you and the society the presentation was very informative truly engaging and inspirational i'm sure that all the participants have been benefited from the talk so on behalf of the departments of biosciences and zoology union christian college I extend my sincere gratitude to you ma'am. Next, I would like to express my sincere thanks to Dr. Shirley Thomas, head of the Department of Zoology, and Mr. Shyam Mohan, coordinator of the Department of Biosciences, for extending all the needed support for the smooth conduct of this webinar. I also thank Shyam sir for, for giving the welcome address. I must mention our deep sense of gratitude to our adjunct professor Dr. Susan Ethan without whom this popular science webinar lecture series would not have happened. We thank her initiative and constant efforts in making all the webinars in the series a reality and a success. I would like to take this opportunity to place on record my hearty thanks to Dr. Sarin Sara John the coordinator of the webinar for her dedication and the hard work she put in for materializing this webinar 
Further, we are grateful for the moral support and encouragement extended by our principal, Dr. Rachel Rena Phillip, and our manager, Dr. Reverend Dr. Thomas John. And of course, no program can be successful without the participants. So I'll take this opportunity to thank all the participants from other institutions as well as this college for your valuable attention and active participation in the interactive session. I extend my thanks to all my dear colleagues and students of the Department of Biosciences and Zoology for the wholehearted support and cooperation. A special thanks to Ms. Shriya of MSc Biotechnology, Department of Biosciences for comparing this event. Finally, a special thanks to all those who have helped in one way or the other to make this webinar a success. Uh, I, I also have one announcement to make. We have an upcoming webinar next week, next Saturday, that is the 14th of August. Uh, it is a popular science webinar lecture on engineering microbiome for human gut and plant root health. Uh, it is uh, jointly organized by the Department of Biosciences and Zoology, coordinated by Dr. Sarin Sarah John of Department of Biosciences and Dr. Devadi V.S. of Department of Zoology. So the flyer will be released soon and I expect your participation in this webinar too. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for participating in today's webinar. I hope uh, we, uh, you have learned and enjoyed this presentation. The Google Form link will be available in the live chat box, and we would appreciate if you can complete and provide your feedback. After that, you will receive the email within 24 to 48 hours with an e-certificate. The link will be active for 15 minutes. Thank you, and we hope you have a great day ahead. Thank you, Uma, for the excellent lecture. I'm so happy that students have really enjoyed, you know, like it was so informative, yes. <laughs> really mesmerizing. Yes. I think uh, it was very that engaging, ma'am. It was an excellent session, very engaging, and usually students.